Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Rare Alicut, the podcast channel dedicated to rare disease. Today we continue to explore Cushing syndrome and for this we are pleased to welcome Professor Jérôme Bertera. Professor Bertera, good morning. Good morning. Professor Bertera, you are an endocrinologist, a university professor at the uh, Paris Faculty of Medicine and a hospital practitioner heading the endocrinology department of the Cushing Hospital in Paris. You are also responsible for the Reference Center for Rare Adrenal Diseases and the Medical Referent of Firendo, the Rare Endocrine Disease Network in France. Professor Bertera, today we are discussing the management of Cushing syndrome. So my first question is quite obvious. What are the main principles regarding the management of patients with Cushing syndrome? Well, the, the first principle, as often in medicine, is to treat the cause. So Cushing syndrome is a, is a complex situation because there are, there are various causes. So when the cause, which is the most frequent, in fact, is in the pituitary, the uh, first approach is to remove the pituitary adenoma that caused the Cushing syndrome. When the cause is an endogenous lesion, one of the first approach, if it's feasible, is to, to remove this uh, uh, adrenal lesion. And when the cause is a neurocrine tumor that can be in the lung or in the pancreas, uh, the first approach is also to, to treat this uh, neuroendocrine tumor. Uh, in any case, when it's difficult to treat the cause or when it's not possible immediately to treat it, one uh, major approach is to control cortisol excess because all the consequences of Cushing syndrome, regardless of the cause, are due to an excessive secretion of cortisol by the adrenals. And uh, more precisely, how can this uh, management be personalized or tailored for patients? Well, the first level, of course, of uh, tailoring is to uh, manage the patient according to its cause. So, for example, Uh, the most frequent situation is Cushing disease. Cushing disease means the pituitary cause of Cushing syndrome, so pituitary adenoma. So this adenoma can be removed by a neurosurgeon using a transferendal approach, meaning uh, most, in most of the cases today that the neurosurgeon will go through the, the nose to operate the uh, pituitary lesion. Um, when the cause is an adrenal lesion, if, and if it's a benign adrenal adenoma, usually it's on one of the two adrenal, and the uh, endocrine surgeon can, by uh, a laparoscopic approach, remove the adenoma. When the cause is a malignant tumor, which is hopefully a, a rare situation, but it can happen. When, for example, it's an adrenal cancer or a malignant non-endocrine tumor. If this tumor cannot be removed by surgery, then you can use medical treatment for an adrenal tumor or for an endocrine tumor, depending on the type of tumor, you might use uh, a cytotoxic chemotherapy or a targeted treatment as often in oncology. For a given cause, Depending on the patient, you might also adapt your treatment. For instance, even though in most situations the first treatment is surgery, there are some patients that cannot be treated by surgery, at least initially, because, for example, the consequences of cortisol excess are so severe that uh, from the cardiopulmonary point of view, it's difficult to operate this patient. Sometimes the tumor, even if it's a benign tumor, cannot be removed by the surgeon. So in this situation, then you will treat your patient first by drugs that will reduce cortisol secretion. Treatment can be also uh, adapted to the project of the patient. For instance, Cushing disease is frequent in young females. And uh, uh, if the patient wants to be pregnant on the short term, when pituitary surgery fell, uh, or if there is a recurrence after pituitary surgery of the Cushing disease, 
then in this situation, most of the medical treatment that you would use in another patient to control cortisol excess cannot be used safely during pregnancy. And in this specific situation, you might treat your patient by bilateral adrenalectomy, while in the other patient, you will use bilateral adrenalectomy only after failure of the other treatment. Uh, then the other constraint to choose the treatment is also what's available in a given country. Not all the medical treatments or the drugs, we are lucky enough now that there are many drugs available to treat Cushing. Not all of them are available everywhere uh, uh, internationally. And uh, depending on the health system coverage, uh, national health insurance or private insurance, not all the treatment will be handled. So this might be also uh, one factor that uh, will uh, have an impact on patient management. And uh, Professor Bertora, beyond the Cushing syndrome itself, what are the most common comorbidities for these patients and how can they be managed? So uh, cortisol is, is uh, quite a unique hormone that uh, has an effect on almost all the tissues. So cortisol excess uh, in Cushing syndrome can be responsible for many different complications. It can cause diabetes, it can cause hypertension, uh, it can cause cardiovascular uh, complication, uh, osteoporosis, and osteoporosis can lead to bone fracture. Cushing syndrome can also cause depression and uh, an increased rate of uh, venous thrombosis. So not only you have to treat cortisol excess, but depending on what your patient has as complication of Cushing, you have also to treat with specific treatment, diabetes or hypertension, uh, depression, or uh, thrombosis. And uh, last but not least, Professor Bertara, as uh, many physicians can be involved in the uh, follow-up of patients with Cushing syndromes, how do we coordinate their care? So Cushing uh, syndrome is rare and is also a complex disease. So the complexity means that you need different specialists, both for the diagnosis and for the treatment of Cushing syndrome. And because it's a rare disease, you need expertise. So you need to manage your patient for the diagnosis and to decide the uh, therapeutic plan in a specialized center. So now, for instance, in Europe, with the European Reference Network, there are various healthcare providers that uh, have been uh, recognized as expert center for adrenal disorder. So the best when it's possible is to have uh, an evaluation in this center. It's also possible through internet to discuss a case when such center is not available in your country through this European uh, reference uh, network. In this multidisciplinary setting, you need the endocrinologist, you need the radiologist, you need the hormonologist for the initial investigation. For discussion of the treatment, you need, depending on the situation, the neurosurgeon, the endocrine surgeon, in some cases, the radiotherapist. You, depending on the complication, you need the diabetologist, the cardiologist, the psychiatrist, the specialist of blood uh, coagulation disorders. Uh, so it's very important to have a discussion in these multidisciplinary teams. Then, of course, you need also close to the patient living in his geographic area, a specialist that could uh, discuss with the spec center. And you need, of course, the general practitioner uh, that knows all the different medical problems of the patient and that is very close to his home. Well, uh, thank you very much, Professor Bertora, for all this clear information on uh, Cushing syndrome. 
As for us, dear listeners, we uh, thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you on our podcast channel for a future episode on Cushing Syndrome. See you soon. Bye.